Feel the power. Welcome to Righteous Invasion of Truth with Dr. Abel Damina. To our Papa and Mama, Doctors Abel and Rachel Damina, we wish you a happy and blessed 31st marriage anniversary. All over the world today, your collective impact is massively felt across the continents, nations and tribes. We bless the Lord for such a wonderful gift and blessings you both are to the world. Many more years of blanketing the whole earth with the fragrance of Jesus' grace together. Trespass, he was my sacrifice. All I need is receive what he provides. Where are the blood buttons? Right here on the one. The righteousness of God. Right here on the one. Anyone saved by the word? Right here on the one. Right yeah. here on the one. Right here on the one. God loved me way before he made the earth. Gave me power over sickness and death. So now I testify that I am alive. And beyond that, I have eternal life. It has been his will that we all. Glory! It is a great joy and a privilege for us to have this opportunity to felicitate our Papa and Mama, Dr. Abel Damina and Dr. Rachel Damina on this 31st anniversary of their marriage. We thank God that we are here as your children to see this great day that you are celebrating your marriage anniversary 2023. We pray that God will continue to bless you and we declare that you are strengthened with all might according to his glorious power. You are delivered from wicked and unreasonable men. You are delivered from every evil work. We couldn't have had better parents than you. Today, we celebrate with you and we join voice with all those who are your children whom you have impacted all over the world to say, Happy 31st marriage anniversary. Papa and Mama, we love you. We celebrate you. Glory! Happy 31st marriage anniversary. Welcome to the most exciting event on television, Riot, Righteous Invasion of Truth, presented by the Power Broadcasting Network, Abel. Damina is my name and we want to welcome all of you to the broadcast today. We are so excited to have all of you connected wherever you're watching around the world. We welcome you to this broadcast. Whoa! Whoa! We want you to know today the word of God is going to come full of life. It's going to come full of revelation. Make up your mind to unlearn so you can relearn as the truths of the gospel are communicated to you by the revelation of the Holy Spirit. We want you to know that every time we have the opportunity to teach you the word of God is an opportunity for you to grow in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me also use the opportunity to mention that every time we teach you the word, it's always our joy to bring you resources that will build you up. I have written some books that will be displayed on the screen. We want to encourage you to order for those books, these new books that I just wrote on the message of the cross and heaven, the believer's reality now. They are books that will build you up and equip you to walk in the fullness of God's purpose for your life. Let me also mention, if you're a Christian or a believer, you've not been discipled at all. Jesus said we should go and make disciples, not converts, disciples. If you have never been discipled, I would like to disciple you today. All you need to do is shoot a mail. The email address is on the screen right now. Shoot a mail to me today indicating your desire to be discipled. And there's a WhatsApp number. If you reach out on the WhatsApp, we will give you all the information for me to disciple you. And it's for free. We will take you through teachings that will equip you to walk the fullness of God's purpose for your life on earth. Finally, if you're in a location where there is no teaching church, where you are taught Christ, where you hear the kind of things we teach, and you want to identify with one, or you want us to equip you to start one, we're always willing to train people to do the work of ministry. That's part of our calling as a ministry. 
If you are interested today to identify with a house center in your location or you want to identify with a campus or you want us to train you to start a lighthouse in your community or in your nation, shoot a mail today to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. I'll be glad to respond to you and, you know, work out how you can be trained or connect you with our campus in your locality. God's word is going to come with power. It's going to come with revelation. So I'd like to encourage you to fasten your seat belts right now as I take you on a gospel adventure into that service where the spirit of our God is already moving. Happy viewing. <laughs> Glory. Glory. Luke 24, 25. Then he said unto them, O fools, slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory next verse and beginning at Moses and all the prophets he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself this is where believing comes if you notice it's only mentioned when he said things concerning himself that is where believing comes you can't find faith in the Old Testament as a book because faith is only found in Christ. Brother Paul was saying in 2 Timothy 3.15 and that from a child thou was known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Talking about the Old Testament, you will find salvation through faith which is in in Christ faith which is in Christ Jesus you've known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise through faith which is in Christ he didn't say through faith which is in the scriptures you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise unto salvation through faith which is in in Christ somebody say faith in Christ all right very important not salvation through faith in the scriptures but is salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus in the scriptures through faith which is in Christ Jesus in the scriptures very key now Christ is not the only personality spoken of or about in the Old Testament but it is only when you find the utterance or prophecy of Christ. You find the utterance or prophecy of Christ that faith is found. Romans 10, 17, Brother Paul discussing the Old Testament again says, So then faith by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Now, to understand that he was discussing the Old Testament, look at verse 6 of Romans chapter 10. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in thine heart who shall ascend into heaven. That is to bring Christ down from above. We've looked at the righteousness of God by faith. And we have looked at the righteousness of the law. Have we done that already? The righteousness of God by faith. And the righteousness which is of the law. And if you observe very carefully, he says the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Next verse, verse 7. Who shall ascend into the deep that is to bring up Christ again from the dead? Verse 8. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee. Even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. Verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Joel 2, 32 is where Brother Paul got that from. Now in verse 14 to 16, see what Brother Paul will say in Romans 10. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? 
And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good tidings. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report. He is talking about hearing about salvation. Not hearing about healing, not hearing about protection, not hearing about preservation. He hearing here is about salvation. So faith comes for salvation. Faith is for salvation. The word is nigh thee, even in your heart and in your mouth. And brother Paul got that from Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 14. But the word is very nigh unto thee in thy mouth and in thy heart, that thou mayest do it. That is where brother Paul got that the word is nigh thee in your heart and in your mouth. That is the word of faith which you preach. So he got that from the Old Testament from Moses. Moses was the one who said that. The word is nigh thee in your heart and in your mouth. And that is the word of faith which you preach. 30 verse 12. It is not in heaven that thou shouldest say who shall go up for us to heaven. And bring it unto us. That we may hear it and do it. Next verse. Neither is it beyond the sea. That thou shouldest say who shall go over the sea for us. And bring it unto us. That we may hear it and do it. So it was Moses who said. Do not say who shall go to the deep to raise Christ. Or to go up and bring him down so you can see that the things brother paul taught were not the coinage of brother paul he went to the old testament to rightly divide the world and pull out what brings faith and put them together in the epistles in that romans chapter 10 verse 6 to 8 but the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise say not in thine heart who shall ascend into heaven that is to bring christ down from above next verse or who shall descend into the deep that is to bring up christ again from the dead so the word of faith is found in the old testament books so how do i know the word of faith in the old testament that which says i should believe in him that's the word of faith so faith is in the old testament but faith is not everything in the old testament faith is the message of christ in the old testament it is called the word of faith which we preach Look at Galatians chapter 3 verse 22. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin. That the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. When he says the scripture has concluded all under sin, where is the scripture? Genesis to Malachi. So Genesis to Malachi has concluded all under sin. But we have to carefully look at it again, very carefully. So, it cannot be before the law was given. Because before the law was given, all were not concluded under sin. Before the law was given, all were not concluded under sin. Because before the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed where there is no law. So, it cannot be before the law was given, and it will get very handy as we study even though he's talking about the Old Testament. Now pay attention. Has concluded all under sin. The word concluded is the Greek word S-U-G-L-E-I-O. So glio. It means to shut in. To make subject to. Or to enclose inside. God cannot be the one that has shut in the people under sin. Or made people subject to sin. Luke chapter 5 verse 6. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes. They enclosed, concluded, shut in, and their net broke. They put the fish inside the net. They enclosed. They put it inside the net. That's the word concluded. Romans 11.32 For God hath concluded them all in unbelief, that he might have mercy upon all that he might have mercy upon all, concluded or under sin. Galatians 3.23 But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up, 
unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Now pay attention. We have two things therefore. The law and faith in the same books. We have the law and we have faith in the same books. The law concludes all under sin. It's not God that concluded all under sin. It is the law that concludes all under sin. Clearly, Galatians 3.19. Wherefore then, served the law, it was added because of transgressions, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hands of the mediator. So in the Old Testament, we have the law which has concluded all under sin. Look at Hebrews chapter 8 verse 9. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt because they continued not in my covenant and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. Hebrews 8.8 8, For finding fault with them. So the law was a fault finder and he found fault with the people to whom it was given. Galatians chapter 3 verse number 9 so then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham 10 for as many as are of the works of the law are under the cause so in the Old Testament books we see the law which has made men guilty has found fault with men and therefore because it has found fault with men it has concluded all on the scene. Two principles here. The law and faith. So when he says the scripture here, he is referring to the law. The scripture has concluded all on the scene. What he's simply saying is that the law has concluded all on the scene. Remember, in the same scripture, there is faith and there is the law. And the job of the law under the scripture is to conclude all on the scene or to find fault or to make all men guilty before God. Now look at Galatians chapter 3 verse 12. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Verse 11. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, evident. The just shall live by faith. So no man is justified by the law. That is from Moses. Moses set that standard. Deuteronomy 27, 26. Cause be he that confirmeth not all the words of this law to do them. And all the people shall say amen. So again, remember a few minutes ago we said that the law is in the Old Testament books. And faith is also in the Old Testament books. Did I say that? So both law and faith are where? In the Old Testament books. Very good. So that means we will find faith and we will find the law in the same books. Just like we will find the righteousness of faith and the righteousness of the law in the same books. Where is the message of faith? In the Old Testament. Okay, very good. Where is the law? In the Old Testament. What is it called? The scriptures. The law is in the scriptures. Faith is in the scriptures. Now pay attention. Galatians 3.23 but before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Kept under. He has concluded all under twice. The word kept under is a Greek word, P H R O U R E O, used for a military guard under. You will see it. That word used in 2 Corinthians 11.32. In Damascus, the governor under Aretas, the king, kept the city of the Damascus with a garrison, desirous to apprehend me. Philippians 4.7. And the peace of God, 
which passeth all understanding shall keep your heart and mind. The word keep there is the word guard. It will guard your heart and mind. That's a positive one. Kept like a military guard. Kept under. Kept under. All right? Or subject to the law. And God cannot be the one shutting us up on the scene. It is the law that shuts. The law shuts. So the law doesn't help or justify anyone. Question. Is there condemnation in the Old Testament? Huh? Okay. Is there justification in the Old Testament? Okay. Is there condemnation and justification in the Old Testament? Exactly. All right. Now, same books, same testament, but two different things. Got the book of Second Corinthians. Let me just add something there to help you. Second Corinthians chapter three, verse five. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. Next verse. Who also had made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the later, but of the Spirit. For the later kill it, but the Spirit give it life. So, later, kill it, Spirit give it life. There is later, there is Spirit. Later, kill it, Spirit give it life in the same books. But if the ministration of death, written and engraving in stones was glorious so that the children of israel could not steadfastly behold the face of moses for the glory of his countenance which glory was to be done away how shall not the ministration of the spirit be rather glorious next verse for if the ministration of condemnation be glory much more that the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory so the same books we have the ministry of condemnation we have the ministry of righteousness we have the ministry of death we have the ministry of life we have the later that kill it we have the spirit that give it life in the same books we have the righteousness of faith we have the righteousness of the law we have the law of the spirit of life we have the law of sin and death same books hence the need to rightly divide ototomio That's why we need to rightly divide. It has condemned all on the scene. So you will find condemnation and Christ in the same books. And many will not see Christ. Many will not see Christ. They will see condemnation only. Second Corinthians chapter 3 verse 13. And not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that, which is abolished. Look at the next verse. But their minds were blinded. For until this day remained the same veil on taking away in the reading of the Old Testament. Which veil is done away in Christ? Is done away where? Once you see Christ, the veil of the law gives way. It's done away in Christ. Give me verse 15. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. What is upon their heart? The veil. So we must know what God did and we must know what God didn't do. We must know what God said and we must know what God didn't say very important they are all in the same book so we must be careful so now where he says the scripture has concluded all under sin we must understand what part of the scripture has concluded all under sin the law john chapter 8 verse 31 then said jesus to those jews who believed on him if you continue in my word then are ye my disciples indeed next verse and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free you don't preach this to believers you don't preach this to believers the believers have already known the truth and the truth has already made them free this scripture is salvation pay attention next verse 
They answered him, we be Abraham's seed and we are never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, you shall be made free? Jesus answered them, verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. Next verse. And the servant abided not in the house forever, but the son abided ever. If the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. What is freedom? Salvation. The day you received Christ was the day you were free indeed. And you are not a servant. You are a son who abides in the house forever. The scripture we just read is talking about salvation. Sin makes people servants to keep the law or under the law. Jesus makes people free and makes them sons, not servants. So when he says the scripture has concluded all under sin, it has to be the law of sin and death. The law of sin and death. Don't forget James 1.13 says, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. God doesn't tempt anybody. When he says the scripture has concluded all under sin, that will be the Old Testament books. It's not God who concluded all under sin because God does not hold you under sin's bondage. God frees you from the bondage of sin. So Jesus is the one that sets free. He sets free. So before faith came, we had the word of faith which we preach. Galatians 3.23 But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith, which should afterwards be revealed. Remember, he tells you in Galatians 3.13, Christ hath redeemed us from the cause of the law, being made a cause for us, for it is written, cause is everyone that hangeth on a tree redeemed it means to buy someone from under captivity christ has redeemed us or has bought us from under the captivity of sin executed by the law galatians 3 24 now we are for the law was our schoolmaster unto christ that we might be justified by faith 25 but after that faith is come we are no longer under a schoolmaster law schoolmaster all of them are negatives the king james says to bring us to christ no the law didn't bring us to christ that's why it's in italics it's actually the law was our schoolmaster until christ it was our schoolmaster until Christ. It didn't bring us to Christ. It's just in James' method of translation. It was our schoolmaster until Christ. The law keeps you in bondage. It doesn't bring you to Christ. Schoolmaster is a Greek word, paedagogos. P-A-I-D-I-O-G-O-G-O-S, paedagogos. Used for those who don't know their way. Like a child leader. A child leader by the Gogos. First Corinthians 4 15. For though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Have ye not many fathers? You have only one father. There's a wave of Ignorant believers and spies is a mixture who go around attacking and castigating anybody who calls his pastor a spiritual father. They say, don't call him spiritual father. Call him pastor. Why are you calling him spiritual father? Why are you calling him papa? Call him pastor. Because they feel if you call somebody a spiritual father, you're worshiping the person. They don't even understand what worship is. 
A spiritual father is doctrine. Is doctrinal. To call your pastor my father is doctrinal. Call doctrine. It's not our tradition as Africans. It's not the way I like. No, it's sound doctrine. For though you have 10,000 instructors, he said, I am your father. I have begotten you through the gospel. A spiritual father is one who nourishes you with doctrine. Father is pata. Pata means a nourisher. It's not a title. It's a responsibility. Father is not a title. You are not calling me father to make me feel nice. Some of you who call me spiritual father are older than me in the natural. It's not because you are, you know, massaging my ego that you're calling me father. No. When you call me father, you are acknowledging and recognizing my responsibility towards you as a spiritual nourisher. Am I nourishing you? Am I feeding you? I am your father. It's not a title. It's not a ordinary title. For though you have 10,000 instructors, you must have one father. You can't live your life calling everybody instructor. You must have a father. A father is a source. That is your point of reference. That is the one you can say, he taught me Christ. He exposed me to scripture. He built doctrine into me. He showed me who I am. Your father is responsible for your doctrinal persuasion. The man responsible for your doctrinal persuasion is your father. Brother Paul called Timothy my son. He called Timothy. He called Titus. He even says, some of my children are forsaking me. People like Alexander the Copper Smith. And he said, God shall pay him. An instructor is a child leader, like a welfare taker. A welfare taker. But a father is one who nourishes you to growth. So the law was our schoolmaster until Christ. That is, before Christ came, our welfare taker was the law. And the law subjected us. When Christ came, Christ freed us from captivity to the law. Christ comes to set free. The law does not set free, it enslaves. The law didn't take us to Christ. Christ looked for us. Christ came for us. Christ came to us. So the schoolmaster is a prison owner. And everyone under the schoolmaster is a prisoner of the schoolmaster. The law was our schoolmaster until Christ. That's why if you look at that Galatians chapter 4 verse 1, now you see the parable brother Paul uses. Now I say that the heir, as long as he's a child, Different nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all. Next verse. But is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Next verse. Even so we, he's using a parable, an analogy here. Even so we, when we were children, we are in bondage under the elements of the world. Children here doesn't mean born again. Children here means we didn't know our way. We didn't know our rights. We didn't know anything. So we were kept under bondage. Now, I'd like you to underline the word under the elements of the world. We were kept under the elements of the world. That will come in handy in a short while. Governor is like a housekeeper or economist, someone who imposes the law in the house. Governors and tutors or economists under was a parable, a figure of speech. So that's why I say, even so, we 
when we were children now before i deal with children come back and pay attention we saw the word under 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 three times in galatians 3 22 but the scripture has concluded all under sin 3 23 but before faith came we were kept under under 3 25 but after that faith is come we are no longer under it's a negative application it refers to being in prison saying the same thing but the word children there is not spiritual growth it's nepios someone who doesn't know what to do where well, we believe as when we are children no and i will explain further brother paul describes the law of moses as elements of the world that is brother paul's description for the law of moses elements of the world that's heavy he calls the law of moses worldliness colossians 2 8 beware lest any man spoil you that word spoil there doesn't mean don't let anybody spoil the microphone no spoil there means to take you captive let no man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men after the rudiments of the world and not after christ after the tradition of men if your bible was mine i will underline tradition of men after the tradition of men after the rudiments of the world and not after christ he is discussing the law and in order for you to see that is the law he's dealing with very seriously here look at verse 20 of colossians 2. we are for if you be dead with christ from the rudiments of the world why as though living in the world are you subject to ordinances if you are really born again and free in christ why are you still under ordinances why are you still under why are you still under ordinances he's discussing the law not only ordinances look at the next verse touch not taste not handle not which are all to perish with the using after the commandments if your bible was mine i will underline that after the commandments and doctrines of men doctrines of men doctrines of men brother paul is discussing the law here and it will be clearer if you look at verse 16 and 17 of colossians 2 let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holiday if you are dead why are you keeping yourself under such things let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holiday or of the new moon or of the sabbath days which are a shadow so anybody still dabbling with ribena and bread anointing oil first of may first of june first of july you are still in the shadow under under the elements under schoolmasters there is shadow of things to come but the body of christ the substance is christ those who are pointers so if you are now with the substance why do you leave the substance to go back and be romancing the traditions of men hebrews 5 12 to 13 for when for the time you ought to be teachers you have need that one teach you again which be the first principles of the oracles of god and i become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat when you should be teachers you are still dabbling around with uh, uh, anointing service uh, uh, communion service uh -uh. you are still napiosis look at verse 13 for everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness 
for he is a babe. Now, that is not referring to spiritual growth. Too. Babe there is as touching the law. When we say you are a babe, it means you are still dabbling with the rudiments of this world. You are still under elements. You are a babe. You need oil to touch your head before you believe you are anointed. You are a babe. You are still under the law. You must eat something and drink something before you believe that you are one with Christ. You are a babe. The day I received Christ, I and Christ became one. When I hear his word, I eat his body and drink his blood. How did I get saved? By faith. Faith in the word. How do I live? By faith. Faith in the word. I don't need elements. Look at the next verse. But strong meat belongeth to them that are full age. Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern between good and evil. Evil there is a law of sin and death. Good there are the good things to come in Christ Jesus. You are able to discern between condemnation and righteousness. You are able to discern between, you know, um, life and death. You are able to discern between the word of God and the commandments of men. You are of age. Elements. is a Greek word, S-T-O-I-C-H-E-I-O-N. Something that fades away. And you know, the law of Moses relates with things. Clothes, food, drinks, a day, papa, handkerchief as mantle. All those are law of Moses. They are commandments of men. They are elementary rudiments. They are worldly things. They perish with the using. When you rub that oil on somebody's head, if somebody's cloth cleaned the oil, it has ended. It has no impact. When you eat that bread and ribena, once you enter toilet, it's over. It has no impact. They perish with the using. But there is a bread that a man may eat and not die. And the bread is he. Kabaya. You didn't hear what I said. This bread that came from heaven is he. Is he. The bread of God is not is not what came from the bakery. It's a person. His name is Jesus. Glory to God. Somebody shout, I'm not under bondage. Say, I'm not under bondage. Again, to fear. These are elementary things of this world. Taste not, touch not. Natural things. Temporary things. Stoicion. The Greek word. S-T-O-I-C-H-E-I-O-N. One of the strong indicators for anybody that is still struggling with the law is that the fact that they cannot do without things. If they are not holding handkerchief, they are holding anointing oil. In fact, there are people that carry anointing oil in jars. Big, big drums. It shows the depth of their carnality and the depth of their bondage to the law. There are people that cannot travel until they touch oil on their head. That is one of the cardinal marks that a man is still tormented by Moses. He cannot stay away from things, even if he's a pastor. The second one is condemnation. When a man is still struggling with Moses, he will be suffering condemnation and he cannot do without things. Mantu, oil, popo, koboko, candle, perfume, wine. Which other one? Eh? Plantain. Red cloth, white cloth, sand, koboko, native doctor incorporated. When you pack all those things, what will a native doctor use now? They've collected everything from the native doctors. He can't do without things. What about baptism? 
Holy Communion. Ah! Dr. Domina, you say we should not take Holy Communion. Why are you talking like that? <laughs> There's one guy they call Dr. Damira. He said, even water baptism, you should not do water baptism. That man is not a man of God. <laughs> Glory to God. Ignorance and, and lack of knowledge as a way of rubbishing somebody in public. Those things look lovely, but no substance. They are called worldly things in the Pauline epistles. They are called elementary things. Elementary, worldly things. You know? Who is Jesus? Jesus is the word. How did you get born again? You believe the message. What we have in Christianity is a message. We walk by faith. Not by sight. We don't have to carry things. We live by faith. Hallelujah. Those things just keep you in bondage. Who kept people in bondage? Who? Who? the law look at galatians 4 8 happy then when you knew not god uh, if your bible was mine that's a verse to underline you did service unto them which by nature are no gods you were worshiping oil when you didn't know god no child can touch your bottle of oil you can fall from the bed but the bottle cannot fall when you knew not god you carry a handkerchief of the man of God. The thing is dirty, but you cannot wash it. You cannot wash it. Because that handkerchief, the man of God touched it. It must be kept like an idol. When you knew not God, when you knew not God, you did service unto them which by nature are no God. You worship the, the handkerchief. You called it mantle. When you lie down, you put it under your pillow. You believe you will sleep well. But now, after that, you have known God, or rather, are known of God. How turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements? Whereunto you desire again to be in bondage? Why? After you have known God, you are still peddling oil, you are still carrying handkerchief, you are still looking for bread and Coca-Cola. After you have known God, and God has known you, you are still worshipping May 1, June 1. After you have known God, Look at Brother Paul's conclusion. Next verse. You observe days and months and times and years. Next verse. I am afraid of you. Lest I have wasted my time on your head. I'm afraid of you. In fact, I'm suspecting you that I may be wasting my labor on your head. After all, you have been taught you cannot do without bottle. Paul say, I am afraid of you, lest I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. It's a big waste of time to have taught you all you have been taught and you are still worshipping a bottle of oil under your pillow. I'm afraid of you. Brother Paul said, I'm afraid of you guys. With all the epignosis. Well, I'm glad it's not happening here. And I'm talking to people following me all over the world. I'm afraid of you. If after hearing me, you're still going back to a bottle of oil and you call it anointing service, I'm afraid of you. Then what have you been hearing? A hundred and fifty dollars. Brother Paul called all those things things of this world. Anointing oil, worldly thing. Bread and ribina, worldly thing. Handkerchief, call mantle, worldly thing. Are you hearing me now? And the greatest insult is when they carry the bottle and they say, This is God in a bottle. That is the greatest insult of all times. 
So your God is inside a bottle. Your God. God inside a bottle. And the bottle has manufacturer and expiry date. And that is your God who will expire very shortly. Worldly things. Elements. You are in bondage. Far from the revelation of Christ. In fact, you have wasted our labor. I'm afraid of you. Shayamana. Brother Paul took time to deal with that word bondage. Look at Galatians 4.3. Even so we, when we were children, we were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we may receive bondage to, to the law. What did he say? That we might receive what? The adoption. We are free from under the law. I don't carry a bottle of oil anymore. I am the bottle of oil. I don't carry mantle in the name of handkerchief. I am the mantle. The mantle is inside me. And because you are sons, God has set forth the spirit of his son into your hearts crying. Abba Father. Remember, the servant does not abide in the house, but the son abides in the house forever. What are you? A son. You are not a servant. You are a son. The word adoption means placement. You are placed as a son with awful privileges and rights. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. In some of those churches where they are still worshipping elements, they will be singing, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I'm be carrying oil and rubbing on their head. I'm no longer. No. If you are no longer a slave to fear, if you are a child of God, you shouldn't have bottle to be rubbing. The bottle is inside you. Christ where? In you. The hope. Somebody shout, he lives in me. Not Lion King, Christ. He lives in you. The Christ. We are now sons. Whatever is not in the spirit of his son doesn't belong to us. Whatever is not in the spirit of God does not belong to us. So there was a dispensation of the Lord that subsisted. And under that dispensation, there was law and faith which has to be rightly divided. We find faith, we find the law, and the law is not of faith. So is it likely that when we look at the Old Testament, we will find contradiction? Huh? Okay. Is it God that has a contradiction or man? Correct. The word is nighty. Moses gave them the gospel. He also gave them the law. Same books. But you have to rightly divide to see the gospel which brings faith and to see the law which brings bondage. To see the gospel which brings righteousness and to see the law which brings condemnation. To see the gospel which brings life and to see the law which brings death. But they are mixed together in the writings. How do you find faith in the Old Testament? Keyword. Galatians 3.22 But the scripture hath concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. The word promise is a Greek word epangelion. Promise, epangelion. A self-fulfilling promise. In a promise, you believe. Under the law, you do. Promise says, believe. And the promiser does it while you receive. Under the law, the responsibility is on you. Under the promise, the responsibility is on the promiser. And you are just a beneficiary of what the promiser will do. You don't do, you receive. You don't do, you receive. 
you receive the promise you receive the promise you receive everything he promised you you don't work for them you only receive but unto she that walketh not but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly his faith is counted for righteousness hallelujah i said hallelujah somebody jump on your feet and shout i receive right now every blessing every favor and every manifestation of the finished work of christ on my behalf i receive i receive said very loud i receive right now every blessing that is mine in christ jesus now tell me i am blessed by faith in what he has done tell me his work is credited to my account he did the work i received the promise i didn't hear your amen i don't have to do nothing i only receive what he has done that's the new testament the new testament is a receiving testament so when i read the old testament i will see the law i will see the promise what do i look for i look for the promise the gospel was a promise in the old testament the gospel today is fulfilled in the new testament what was promised has been fulfilled we believe in what has been fulfilled so the gospel is done, done, done. The gospel is not, I will be healed. The gospel is, I have been healed. The gospel is not, I will be righteous. The gospel is, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen. That's good news, isn't it? It's been done. Over the top good news. And as your amen will come like thunder, I command that you function in the reality of righteousness. In the reality of your authority. In the reality of the finished work. In the reality of the abundance of righteousness. Reign in life. Reign in life. There is therefore now no condemnation for you. You are free from guilt. You are free from condemnation. You are free from the accusation of the enemy. You stand complete in the righteousness of Christ. In the name of Jesus. Blessed beyond limits. Blessed beyond the cost. Kept by the power of God. Enjoy everything that Jesus has provided. In the name of Jesus. Great grace is upon you. Great grace is upon you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. And everyone bless you that amen like thunder. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. I believe you've been impacted by that word. Oh my goodness, what a service. I believe that revelation knowledge keeps growing big on your inside until nothing else matters. We pray for you today. Sick bodies be healed. In the name of Jesus. Bodies and yokes be destroyed. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Where you need a miracle, receive a miracle now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father, for your word that never comes back void. Thank you for confirming your word with signs, wonders, and miracles. We give you praise. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. We are very excited and we are looking forward to hearing the good report of God's goodness and kindness upon your life. Once again, you don't want to miss the broadcast. Every day we're here live, 12 noon, GMT plus one, and 6 p.m. GMT plus one on all the various platforms that we belong to. We also want to encourage you to tell more people about what you're learning. Share with more people. Get more people to hear this good word around the world. Let me quickly encourage you. If you don't belong to a campus, our campuses are extension churches where we create an enabling environment for believers to assemble and learn the word of God with us all over the world. Wherever you're watching right now, if you don't belong to one, you can identify with one today. God never intends for you to be in isolation. God does not intend for you to just operate on your own. You need to be in a house. You need to be in a family. You need to be in a church where you are accountable and where people are watching over your spiritual growth. And that's what our campuses provide around the world. If you want to identify with a campus today, send a mail to me, Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com, indicating your location, 
and we will look out for how to connect you to any of our campuses in your area. But if there is no campus and you've looked around, you can't find one, but you're looking for that fellowship of brethren and believers to grow with and to evangelize your community with, we're willing to train you, equip you, and teach you the word of God to a point where you too can begin a lighthouse in your community. Remember, you are a city set on a hill that cannot be hid. If you want us to train you today, shoot a mail to me telling me you want to be trained as a campus coordinator and we will take you up on it and train and equip you. Finally, we have a global discipleship academy. You've been a Christian. Nobody has discipled you. Jesus said we should make disciples, not converts, not churchgoers. Disciples. That's very critical. If you've never been discipled, I will want to disciple you personally. All you need to do is send a mail to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com indicating your desire to be discipled by me and I will take you up on it and take you through discipleship. Remember, the discipleship training is free. We don't charge you a dime. Our intent, our desire, our prayer is to see men and women rise all over the world doing the work of Jesus. Once again, we love you. We are so glad that we have the opportunity to bring you clarity and bring you the word. We look forward to bringing more word to you and we want you to tell more people about what God is doing right here with us at Power City International. Until I come again your way, same time, same station. Don't you ever forget this, that the kingdom of God is in power. Amen. Amen. Glory. Amen. Whoa.